30,000 miles on a Dyna Lowrider. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone. In this vlog today, we're going to talk about the 30,000 mile review of my 2014 Harley Davidson Dyna Lowrider FXDL. I bought this bike three years ago as of next week and it had about 9,500 miles on it when I got it and now we are at 30,000 so I have put 20,000 and change on it hard to believe I've had this three years already my first bike the Sportster 1200 the low rider still feels new to me. I love, love, love this bike. The Sportster was always a little on the small side for the kind of riding that I do, uh, especially out on the interstate. The low rider is just the perfect size. Um, it's fine on the highway, sixth gear, great. 103 engine, lots of power. And yet it's still lightweight enough to ride on these country roads and kind of throw it into the turns. Just such a fun bike. First, let's talk about some of the mods that were done on this bike. When I bought it, it had Vance and Hines long shots, exhaust, a tuner, a TTS master tune. And it had a it had the original air intake, but the filter was replaced with some kind of a high flow filter. Uh, I ended up just taking that off. So I, I guess technically that was a stage one, but I ended up taking that whole intake off and replacing it with a Scream and Eagle ventilator, which gives you the uh, K and N style filter that you oil. The previous owner also did forward controls and as some of you who've watched my earlier vlogs might remember those were really too far out in front for me so we'll get to that in a little bit. Once I got it I did uh, heated grips and new foot pegs to match. I put on a luggage rack, an LED headlight, and custom dynamics LEDs on the front and rear. I also did their triple play module, which gives you different patterns of lights on the taillights when you hit the brakes. My most recent mod was a external breather. When I purchased it, the dealer put a new battery in, a new set of Scorcher 31 tires, which is the OEM tire for this bike, and he put new brake pads on the rear. Now this is a dual disc up front, and I still have the same brake pads that were on there when I bought it and they still have plenty of meat on them and so does the rear so the brakes have held up really well the scorchers didn't last as long as i hoped i got about nine eight to nine thousand miles out of them which was very disappointing so next i went with the dunlop american elite which i had good success with on my sportster and there I got about 12,000 miles out of the rear and I just replaced that about a thousand miles ago with a Michelin Commander 3 cruiser tire. I still have the American Elite on the front that will be hitting 12,000 miles in the next month or two and that will also be getting replaced with the Commander 3. This bike also came with spoke wheels instead of the cast. Some other things this bike came with from the factory are ABS and uh, it has a key fob instead of a traditional key. I think all the 
the low riders of, of 2014 had that, but the ABS was optional. Um, some pros and cons with ABS. Um, obviously, it's ABS. It's going to protect you more in, in a panic braking situation. However, you have to replace the brake fluid every two years. That's per Harley, and there's a service bulletin about that. The issue is that if the moisture in the brake fluid goes above, I believe, 4%, the ABS module can fail, and there's some horror stories on that. Supposedly the 2014s are better than some of the earlier years, but it's still a problem. Uh, the other problem is if you have to take off your caliper or service the brake system such that it's exposed to air, you absolutely do have to take it to a dealer they have to use a tool which will actuate the ABS module and purge that air out. Now I have done two brake fluid swaps on this bike front and rear so far. I did not go to the dealer either time. What I did was I did a traditional brake bleed until fresh brake fluid was coming out, did not introduce any air into the system, and then I took the bike out on a wet day just going down my road about 15 miles an hour and engaged the ABS very simple just squeeze that lever hard and it will engage and the bike just continues to go in a straight line that's the whole point of ABS so actuate the module a few times and then take it back in and bleed some more brake fluid. The idea is whatever fluid is in that module you want to allow to escape. I will say ABS is a great option. It might have engaged one or two times in my riding and I was glad it did. So coming from a Sportster, uh, a bike which I did virtually all of my own maintenance on, it was a little bit of a challenge getting used to the Dyna. The Dyna is a little more involved. There are three compartments of oil instead of two. And each one, you know, has its own procedure. So I do my engine oil every 5,000 miles with a Mobile One V-Twin, full synthetic. I do the primary and the transmission every 10,000 miles and I use Redline uh, for those. I have not observed any particulate matter to be concerned about. Uh, the bike rides uh, really well. Some other maintenance items are more difficult to service than on the Sportster. For instance, fork oil. On the Sportster, you can remove a small screw at the bottom, drain your fork tubes, uh, refill by removing the cap up top, and you're good to go. Not so on the Dyna, on this Dyna. You need to actually remove both of the forks from the bike. And so that's pretty involved. You have to take off the wheel, the um, fender, you know, all that stuff, the brake calipers, everything has to come out. You get the forks out, turn them upside down to drain them, and to refill them, you have to use a specialized tool to measure the distance from the top of the fork tube to the fluid level. So it is a more involved process. It's not something that you have to do often. I believe that's a 50,000 mile interval. But the reason I did it was I was having a noise in my front forks, which at the end of the day just turned out to be low fluid. I don't know why it would have low fluid. But while I was at it, I decided to replace the stock springs with a pair of progressive springs. Um, they're nothing fancy. I think they were a hundred bucks. And honestly, I can't say I really notice a difference between the two sets of springs. But like I said, while I was in there, I just felt like doing it. 
I put it back to the correct fork oil level and now no more noise I can brake and it's fine. It does have a little bit of dive in the front. That's just the way um, the stock setup or even those progressive springs is. I mentioned the forward controls. I ended up getting the reduced reach forward controls conversion kit and that was a godsend. Uh, I am now super comfortable on the bike. I do have to use the lumbar pad, uh, which pushes me forward in the seat a little bit, and I am golden. So one thing on the FXDL that's different from the other Dynas is the main switch is on the left side of the bike between the two jugs. Because of that, the horn has been relocated to hang down by the front of the frame. That is something I don't like. Uh, the switch on the side, yeah, it's okay, it's cool looking, it's a little different. But the horn is very tiny, a little pancake type horn. And there's just no room to put a larger horn in. I really like a louder horn. I did that on my Sportster, but I can't fit it. And the other thing I don't like is the stock horn has a bracket which is prone to braking. It has a weak point where there's a hole for a screw or a wiring hound harness uh, mount, and that spot the bracket tends to snap in half eventually. Mine broke once so far. I'm not sure how long the current one will last. In terms of maintenance cost, again, keep in mind, I'm doing all this stuff myself. I can't say the Dyna has been any more expensive than the Sportster. Things like adjusting and lubricating throttle cables, adjusting the clutch, changing the fluids, things like that, um, checking belt tension, uh, checking the alignment, I guess would be the word, of the rear wheel. Uh, those things are all pretty much similar on both bikes. The, the Dyna frame, as I understand it, the rear fork might be swing arm, maybe that's the correct word, is attached to the transmission. And there's actually a procedure for aligning the whole frame, you know, the, the engine, swing arm, transmission, all, all these things have to be lined up together. I've never done it. I haven't suspected a problem. Uh, maybe one day I will need to do that or I'll at least check it. That's something unique to the Dyna that I didn't have on my previous bike. Another thing that's a potential problem that some people have is the motor mounts wearing out prematurely. Now, they're not the greatest design as I understand it, but as far as I can tell, at 30,000 miles, mine are fine. There are different things you can check, clearances, and also when they go bad, you start getting vibration issues. I don't have any of those things, so I'm certainly happy about that. There are aftermarket mounts that are a little better, and there are some that are way better, but about four or five hundred dollars. I won't be doing anything like that. But if the OEM ones need to be replaced, I'll probably look at an aftermarket one that maybe is a little longer lasting. I haven't had any big surprises with this bike that, that were bad, you know, things that went wrong. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I feel like I know it well after three years and um, it just feels like it's broken in, man. 
Um, I haven't really had to adjust the clutch much at all. It has great acceleration. It, it, it just really feels great riding it. Um, another issue people have had is with wheel bearings going bad. And some people have had wheel bearings go bad at really low miles, like 10,000 or something crazy like that. When I did my rear tire, about 28,000 miles or so, the rear bearings were beautiful. Smooth, quiet, no issues whatsoever. I'll be curious to see how the fronts are when I do those soon. I did pick up a set of bearings just in case, uh, but if they don't aren't needed this time around, then maybe, maybe next time. But I haven't had any of the issues that some people have reported having with this bike. And I'm very glad for that. My riding is mostly this kind of riding you see right here. Uh, 40 to 60 miles an hour on country roads. Sometimes it can be very curvy. I do go up and down mountains a fair amount of time. Um, I do get on the interstate probably about 20% of the time, but I, I will accelerate hard, rarely, you know, on occasion. But for the most part, I, I ride it in a moderately spirited fashion. Um, certainly not like a granny. And I just feel like it has really been great. I don't know what the realistic expectancy is in terms of miles before I would have to be concerned about things inside the engine. Um, my understanding is the compensator on the 2014 models is a new design, which is better than the several previous designs that caused people a lot of trouble. Um, the tensioner on this version of the twin cam is also much improved over previous versions. One thing people have an issue with Harleys is the stock seat and stock suspension, rear suspension. And I have to say, uh, this has worked out pretty well for me. I am typically not on my bike for longer than two hours on a given ride. And at two hours, I'm ready to get off. But the stock seat and the rear shocks manage to keep me fairly comfortable during the ride. Sometimes I get off the bike and I'm like, wow, I wish this seat was a little more comfortable. And as far as the shocks go, you know, I could spend 600 bucks on a set of progressive, uh, what is it, 444s or something, I, I forget their numbering, but um, I, I just don't feel that is worth the cost. Maybe if I had a passenger or I was riding longer distances, then I would, I would jump at that, but it's been tolerable, you know, it's been okay. It hasn't been perfect, but it hasn't been something that's caused me a lot of grief. As stated, no issue with uh, giddy up and go. None whatsoever. So I think I've mentioned everything that uh, stuck out in my mind as potential issues and what my experience has been like at 30,000 miles. There's some things I did to the bike myself just for the heck of it. I did have saddlebags on here at one time, which I removed, um, good riddance to those. But in doing that, I did the Harley turn signal relocation on the back so that they are now located on the t uh, fender. And that worked out okay. Uh, when you take the saddlebags off, it leaves some gaping holes in uh, the rear alongside the fender. So I, I got some aftermarket covers for those. 
and I put a couple of little doodads on the bike, like axle nut covers and the little script plates over the brake calipers, um, windshield, which is kind of a, an essential for me. All in all, it's just a really beautiful looking bike. I love chrome. I love keeping it nice and clean and taking it out for a ride and I get lots of compliments on it. Um, there's really nothing about this bike that I would say is a, a big disappointment or anything like that. I'm so glad that I purchased it. Even though there's a lot of garage queens out there with very low miles, a well-maintained Dyna, or really any Harley with a twin cam that's got 30,000 miles on it, still has a lot, lot, lot of life in it. So, that is for sure. On the interstate, 75 miles an hour in sixth gear, and it's doing about 28, 2900 RPM. Nice and planted. Engines purring. When I'd pass the truck on my Sportster, man, I'd get buffeted with wind and have to hang onto those handlebars. But this thing doesn't even flinch. Definitely a more enjoyable ride on the interstate. For a seven year old bike, the worse for wear, man. Just a real looker. You can see some of the add-ons that were done. The exhaust, the intake, the windshield, the little fork bag, slipstream collection, pedals, front and back, grips, same thing. These are heated. Stock seat with lumbar pad. Little cover for where the turn signals used to come out. Maximum covers. Strip. But I can't complain, not one bit. Turn signal reload kit. Just replace the stock spark plug wires with a set of Scream and Eagle fat wires. Engine guard, previous owner also did that. Otherwise, not too many changes. Just a really enjoyable bike to ride. Highly, highly recommended, folks. Thanks for watching.